Welcome to the first installment of Rochelle's Daily Wire video edition for the brand new year of 2020. I am Bill Rochelle, the editor-at-large for American Bankruptcy Institute. In late December, the Third Circuit was busy with two important bankruptcy decisions, both of them reported in my column on ABI's website. One dealt with the applicability of the exception to the automatic stay with respect to repo transactions. And believe me, if you're involved in repos, it's a decision you need to read in full text. But what I'm going to talk about is a decision on December 19, written by Circuit Judge Kent Jordan, dealing with the constitutional power of a bankruptcy court to issue a controversial third-party non-consensual release. The decision came up, as you can guess, from the bankruptcy court in Delaware. The creditors believed that they had a $1.3 billion fraudulent transfer suit against the owners of the debtor company, alleging that they received a fraudulent transfer while the company was insolvent. To settle the claim, the owners offered and agreed to pay $325 million that would constitute the principal funding for a Chapter 11 plan. The bankruptcy court approved the plan over the objection of some of the creditors, although admittedly most creditors went along with the settlement. The issue came up to the Third Circuit with Judge Jordan focusing on the constitutional power or the lack of it for the bankruptcy judge to enter the non-consensual third-party injunction preventing anyone on earth from suing those shareholders who made the $325 million contribution. To cut to the bottom line, Judge Jordan said that there is constitutional power under the Stern versus Marshall decision if what the bankruptcy court is doing is, and I quote him, a matter integral to the restructuring of the debtor-creditor relationship. And of course, you can imagine that he went on to say that this particular third-party release passed constitutional muster because without the settlement and without the release, there would have been no Chapter 11 confirmation. The uh, circuit court was, I think, trying to limit the circumstances under which courts in Delaware and elsewhere in the Third Circuit could issue these third-party injunctions. But I think it probably will have the opposite effect because the decision really tells bankruptcy judges what they need to do to justify constitutional power for third-party releases. But of course, even if there is constitutional power, it does not mean that there is necessarily statutory power to enter those releases. And certainly on the question of statutory power, there is a stark, very stark split of circuits. We have the 5th, 9th, and 10th circuits that categorically prohibit third-party releases such as this, while the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 7th circuits will permit third-party releases under various circumstances. One of these days, I'm sure, the U.S. Supreme Court is going to grant certiorari to review a case. Perhaps it might be this one, which is Millennium Lab Holdings out of the Third Circuit. It's way too early to know if there will be a cert petition. We will report it on my column on the ABI website. Meanwhile, to all of you out there, Happy New Year. We hope you all prosper and be healthy in the new year. And in the meantime, try not to work quite as hard as you did last year and spend a bit more time with your family. Until next week, same time, be well, take care, and uh, do something uh, important with your family in the next few days. Good day.